Dr. Fager and Damascus overshadow the others of the 64 crop. Dr. Fager and Damascus would beat four times in a rivalry that would equal any in American racing history. In 1967, Damascus set out to win the Triple Crown. Dr. Fager was set to the task of winning the rich races run around the classics. They met in their preparation for these important races in the stirring 1967 Gotham Stakes, which you are witnessing now. As they went down the back stretch, Royal Malabar, a sprinter, held the lead. Dr. Fager and Damascus were laying close enough. Dr. F Fager is going to move around horses as they come to the top of the stretch. Damascus will make the first move at Malabar. This race was run at Aqueduct Racetrack, coming out of the chute. Royal Malabar is still on the lead. Damascus, Bill Shoemaker in the iron, sets out to catch him. Dr. Fager with Manuel Icaza goes around those two. You will be watching one of the stirring stretch duels of the four races that these two met in. This one set the scene. Watch them as they battle down the aqueduct stretch. challenges it from the outside. The two great thoroughbreds are matching strides. Forget the rest of them. This is a two-horse race between two rivals who will meet four times. As they leave the eighth pole, it's Dr. Fager on the outside asserting himself to draw off and win. The mile is going to be run in one minute, 35 and a... A rainy day at Churchill Downs, but the 93rd run for the Roses will traditionally ignore wind and weather. Despite National Guardsmen and against a background of potential racial demonstrations, Derby Day maintains its proud dignity. Most time, and few predict, Proud Clarion, a 30 to 1 shot from the Derby Dan farm, will run away with the classic. The Big Bay Colt has never before won a single stake race. The pre race favorite, Damascus. As the field turns for home, Proud Clarion explodes with speed under the whip of jockey Bob Ussery. In the middle of the track, he moves from eighth to fifth, then only a head behind the leader, Barb's Delight. Ussery said, when I asked him for it, he had it. Proud Clarion posts the third fastest derby time, winning $162,000 and the Roses. Pimlico, annual setting for the Preakness Stakes. Second jewel in racing's triple crown. Number one, Damascus, pre-race favorite. Number two, Proud Clarion, Kentucky Derby winner. Three, in reality, it's a classy field of 10 starters and the richest Preakness purse ever, $194,000. The final turn and into the stretch. Damascus, Willie Shoemaker on top, comes into the stretch having moved from eighth position at the three-quarter pole to a head-on-head -head battle with In Reality and Proud Clarion. Then a fantastic burst of speed spread eagles the field. Damascus really pours it on and moves ahead easily and surely going to the front. It's no contest now as Damascus almost coasts towards the line. It's the second fastest Preakness in history, eliminating a triple crown winner this year. Next, the Belmont. Pair of Highland Blade in the 1967 Travers Stake. And they're off. Long the inside, get a performance for two amigo long shot. Damascus in the far side turn, and reason to hail is four. They come by the stand that way, get a performance on the inside, and two amigo dabbling head and head. Gap a safe race, takes Damascus third, and reason to hail is four. They swing around the clubhouse turn, with get a performance, and two amigo long side. Gap a ten race now, Damascus gives third, and reason to hail is four. Looks as though Gale Performance and two Amigo are trying to draw away into a long lead and try to steal this mile and a quarter, Travers. Now they're going into the back stretch along the inside and two Amigo. Two Amigo now on the outside getting a half length lead with Gale Performance still alongside second. A gap of 12 lengths, Damascus is third, the gap of five lengths and reason to hail is four. Going along the back stretch to the half mile pole, Two Amiga still has a three parts, now a full length advantage. Gale of performance second, a gap of eight lengths, and Damascus is underway third, with reason to hail four. They swing around the far turn that way, two Amiga and Gale of performance, Damascus now under a hard edge and moving up from the outside, and Damascus getting the lead. 
at Damascus now in front and going away by five weeks to a meager second as reason to hold comes on third and get a performance back to four. Coming into the stretch with a quarter of a mile ago, Damascus in front by eight weeks. That's reason to hail on the outside to Amiga and Gala performance. That's in the eighth pole, it's Damascus in front by eight weights. With reason to hail second to Amiga and Gala performance. And as they go over the finish line, this tremendous horse, Damascus the winner by 20 lengths. With reason to hail second to Amiga third. And Fifty-five thousand racing fans jam Aqueduct for the running of the Woodward. Damascus comes from next to last and passes Dr. Fager to lead the way into the stretch. The three-year-old Colt, son of Sword Dancer, responds to jockey Willie Shoemaker with a tremendous finishing burst of speed. It's Damascus across the wire, a full ten lengths ahead of Buck Passer with Dr. Fager third. Damascus, best racehorse in America. The 16th running of the Washington, D.C. International at Laurel. The fast field includes horses from Canada, France, Japan, Australia, England, and the United States. Number eight, He's a Smoothie from Canada, opens up a four-length lead in the first quarter mile. Running on grass, the horses are competing for a first-place purse of $90,000. Turning for home, Fort Marcy leads Damascus. Manuel Icaza urges Fort Marcy to the wire, winning by a nose over top money winner Damascus for a 1-2 U.S. victory. In 1968, Dr. Fager never carried an impost of less than 130 pounds and was able to win an unprecedented four championships in a single season. Champion sprinter, champion grass horse, champion handicap horse and horse of the year. He set a world record for the mile of 132 and a fifth, carrying 134 pounds, equaled a track record of 159 and three for a mile and a quarter under 132, and broke a seven furlong track record with 139, getting the distance in 120 and a fifth. When Damascus first meets Dr. Fager in 1968, Damascus carries the top weight of 133, while Fager is carrying 132. You are watching it now, the exciting suburban handicap. It was but a field of five. Damascus, Dr. Fager, Bold Hour, Amerigo Lady, and in reality, there was no head of R, there was no rabbit. Fager grabbed the lead early. Damascus, with nobody else to challenge the great Fago, went after him himself, and the two match strides in one of the most exciting stools down the back stretch you will ever see. These are two of the greatest horses of all time, hooked up in a speed duel. They're fractions. They'll go the six furlongs in 111. They'll go the mile in 134 and 3, and they'll equal the track record with a 159 and 3 finish. Watch them. Raul Yopais on the inside. He's riding Dr. Fager. Alongside of him is Ikaza on Damascus. They're going head and head. One of them has to give up eventually. Bold Hour is moving at them. In reality, we'll finish last in this great race. Five horses. Amerigo Lady, the filly, runs fourth. At this point, Dr. Fager asserts himself. He pulls away from Damascus. He opens up a strong lead. Damascus, a game horse, has had enough. Bold Hour is able to slip between them and run second, but Dr. Fager has won the 1968 Suburban Handicap. In the Brooklyn Handicap, just 16 days later, Damascus carried 130, while Dr. Fager carried 135 pounds. They had raced three times up to this. Damascus had won but one, Dr. Fager two. On this day, Hedivar was there, and he was very much up to the job. You see him now sprinting to a lead, all out, every 
desire to, to knock poor Dr. Fager out of the picture. He opens up an enormous lead with Tommy Lee riding the horse. He goes the quarter in 22 and 4, the half in 45 and 4, the three quarters in 109 and 2, and this is a mile and a quarter race. Dr. Fager runs right with him. The two of them will match strides. It'll be too much for Dr. Fager. Damascus will be able to even up the rivalry and win by two and a half lengths under Manuel Icaza. Damascus ended his career with a sad last place finish in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, a race he had won as a three-year-old. He returned to the barn injured and never raced again. But in his other 31 starts, Damascus boasted 21 victories, 7 seconds, 3 thirds, and career earnings of $1,176,781. Dr. Fager ended his career with his incredible victory in the Vosburgh Handicap, a race which he had won as a three-year-old. In a career that had 22 starts, Dr. Fager had won 18 times with 2 seconds and 1 third, with his only unplacing coming in the Jersey Derby, a race he won easily but was disqualified. Only champions buck pass, a successor in Damascus who beat him twice, ever finished ahead of Dr. Fager. He showed career earnings of $1,002,642. This is their final meeting, the Brooklyn Handicap. The fractions have just about eliminated Dr. Fager. Damascus moves over and takes the lead on his rival. Damascus and Dr. Fager were indeed great, and their greatness was best demonstrated the four times they raced against each other. Even though he gives his rival five pounds, Dr. Fager still hangs on gamely. And as for Damascus, with this two-and-a-half length win, he sets the track record of 159 and a fifth. Final score of their four great meetings, Dr. Fager 2, Damascus 2.